Sands, president of Cleveland State University, and I welcome you to our first ever virtual State of the University address. What you just heard was the CSU alma mater, sung by our own CSU choir from the floor of the Wallstein Center. What better way to kick off our time with you today? It has been my privilege and pleasure to be here with you now for the past two plus years at Cleveland State and I could not be prouder of how we have moved our university forward together, especially over the past eight months during what we hope is a once in a century pandemic. We are now in a time of great challenge and opportunity, and I appreciate all that each of you have done. Our extended CSU family of faculty, staff, students, trustees, alums, community supporters, and more to carry us through this pandemic with compassion, with grace, focus, and commitment to our core mission, educating students and producing cutting edge research. I'm pleased to tell you that in 2020, our 56th year of existence, the state of our university is very strong. And over the next 40 minutes, we will tell you the story of our CSU, of how we are advancing our brand of engaged learning every day, how we are impacting students, our community, our city, and our nation. You'll hear from some of our faculty, staff, and students so that you can feel and experience firsthand what we mean to so many on a personal level, how we are touching lives, changing lives, and defining our future. We'll provide you an update on how we're advancing our seven strategic priorities and talk about our accomplishments over the past year, how we are building upon our strong foundation of teaching and research excellence, taking steps to solidify our financials, advancing and extending our brand, growing enrollments, and investing in our institution in ways that are innovative and forward-looking. One thing I have learned over many years of working with large organizations is that success has many mothers, and we need strong leaders at every level to be successful. Since it all starts from the top, I'd like to begin by thanking Governor Mike DeWine, Lieutenant Governor John Houston, for their strong leadership in Ohio and continued support for higher education. I'd like to thank Chancellor of Higher Education Randy Gardner and IUC President Bruce Johnson for their leadership and guidance through a very challenging time for all of us. I'd also like to thank our Board of Trustees, led by Chairman Dave Gunning and Vice Chairman Tim Cosgrove, who are working hard every day to support the great work we are all doing at Cleveland State. And to our leadership team here on the ground, our faculty, our staff, our students, and all of the CSU supporters for believing in us and fully supporting our collective mission. In 2020, we strengthened our team with several highly talented and respected results-driven leaders. Dr. Faris Faison, our Senior Vice President for Research, Innovation, and Healthcare Strategy. Faris joins us after a 39-year career in the Navy, attaining the rank of three-star admiral and serving his final tour of duty as the Surgeon General of the Navy, responsible for over 70,000 healthcare professionals around the world supporting our naval forces. Dr. Kenneth Kahn, our Dean of the Mania Hoosier College of Business, who most recently served as Senior Associate Dean of the School of Business at Virginia Commonwealth University. Ken's highly recognized as an experienced academic administrator, scholar, and researcher 
on innovation and innovation management. I'd like to welcome Jonathan Weiner, our Vice President of Enrollment Management and Student Success. Jonathan's 20 plus years of experience in higher ed, working on behalf of students at the Cleveland Institute of the Arts and Case Western Reserve University. And Rita Andelson, our Vice President for Marketing and Communications, who joins us from Metro Health with over 20 years of broadcast journalism and communications expertise in real world situations. And Vanessa Whiting, a well-respected community and business leader who was recently appointed by Governor DeWine to our Board of Trustees. When we talk about our year in review, we must begin with what happened across the U.S. in early March. It's difficult for many of us to remember what life was like BP before pandemic. So at the top of our list of accomplishments this year is how we stepped up and responded here on campus. From the very first moments we learned of the emerging community health threat we pulled together and prioritized what we needed to do to continue to operate and keep our people safe. We made thoughtful and reasoned decisions, true to our principles of shared governance, rooted in data analysis and tailored to our specific needs. All of this that drove us and set us apart from our peers. And we did a number of things. First, we developed a campus-wide pandemic response team to coordinate our actions. The team analyzed our campus footprint, our physical plant, our teaching and working schedules, all to figure out how to best develop short and long-term safety protocols that would work for us. Second, to keep spring semester teaching and learning on track, we made a decision to close down our campus and transition more than 1,200 courses to remote instruction. And through the leadership of Provost Jinping Zhu and Faculty Senate President Bill Bowen, we did this collaboratively with the time and resources needed for faculty and staff to do this well. Third, we began work early on a plan to repopulate our campus with safety protocols to give us confidence that we could return to campus safely. Our comprehensive seven layers of personal protection plan, masking at all times, six foot minimum distancing, daily health assessments, enhanced environmental protections, and an aggressive testing and contact tracing and quarantining process became a standard that we shared across the state. We built in flexibility for students, faculty, and staff with varying levels of personal health concerns. We did this with hybrid, synchronous, and asynchronous course options. We engaged over 50 student ambassadors to remind everyone to wear their mask and keep their distance. And fourth, we made an active commitment to creating a culture of compliance and support to both drive needed behaviors and help get our students through. And thanks to the leadership of our Faculty Senate, who worked on their own time throughout the summer we were able to offer flexible grading options to our students over the summer and reach consensus on offering 50% of classes on campus this fall. What was the result? The result is that our plan is working. Enrollments are rock steady, retention rates are up, students are staying engaged, and to date, our on-campus COVID infection rate has been slightly less than expected and is generally lower than what we have seen across other institutions of higher learning in the state. And maybe most importantly, this pandemic didn't slow us down one bit in our drive to execute on our academic, research, student support, and community engagement objectives. Let's begin with academics. Last year at our State of the University Address, we made a commitment to invest in our faculty. And despite the pandemic, we kept that commitment. We recruited 33 full-time faculty in areas like biomedical research, data analytics and cybersecurity, and applied social sciences. This stands in stark contrast to many other institutions that suspended their faculty searches during these challenging times. 
I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about two of the new faculty members who joined us this fall, Dr. Kalish Gulsan and Dr. Jingchi Yang. Dr. Gulsan joined us from the Lerner Research Institute here in Cleveland, and Dr. Yan joined us from the Albert Einstein Medical School in New York. What's unique about these two individuals is that each of them brings a $1 million R01 grant to CSU, the first time we have ever brought in two funded researchers at this level. Dr. Gulsan is studying chronic inflammation as it relates to cardiovascular disease and lung cancer, and Dr. Yan is working on better understanding the pathology of autism. Let's hear from Drs. Gulsan and Yan on how their research will impact CSU. I believe CSU, because of the, the type of student population we get here, I think we have more chances of getting uh, interaction between a professor and a student at a deeper level as compared to the more prominent universities where professors don't have a lot of time. Here we have a lot of time for the students, we have facilities for the students, and we are always here to help them. Our job here is to make sure that we are including students from different various backgrounds, backgrounds, you know, social backgrounds, economic backgrounds. We are bringing them here and we are showing them what we have here and they can learn from them and we will be able to help them. Uh, right now I'm teaching the course of genetics to undergraduate students. I'm hoping I can use my expertise of neuroscience to help the students expand their learning interests and most importantly can increase the ability of learning. I'm so happy in this year I joined CSU, a Rider University, and the most welcoming campus community. So I hope together we can make USU continue to be positive, successful, and friendly to everyone. In addition to adding new talent, our faculty had a great year attracting more investment in their work. Dr. Debbie Jackson from our College of Education and Human Services was awarded a $2 million NSF grant to work with CMSD students to enhance a talent pipeline for students interested in computer science and information technology. So the most recently funded project that we received from the National Science Foundation is around computer science education and providing pathways for students from the Cleveland Metropolitan School District to Cleveland State University or other universities or a community college or career in computer science. So we'll be working this summer to develop workshops and internships for, for this first summer, ninth and 10th graders who are interested in computer science will have summer opportunities to learn more, work alongside professionals and engage in computer science type activities that students from other districts may already have access to just based on where they live and their zip code. Dr. Meredith Bond, Dean of our College of Sciences and Health Professions, and Dr. Christine Moravec of Lerner Research Institute, a CSU graduate, are co-PIs on a new $1.2 million NIH grant to recruit underrepresented minority PhD students to Northeast Ohio. CSU was awarded in partnership with Case Western Reserve University a $3.1 million grant from the Cleveland Foundation to advance something called the Internet of Things Collaborative, a project designed to better integrate internet-based technologies into everyday life. And Dr. Anton Komar, director of our Center for Gene Regulation in Health and Disease, is our first researcher to receive two R01 grants, totaling $2.7 million, focusing on how protein mechanisms impact tumor initiation and progression. And how are we supporting our students? Many of our students face challenges in getting their education while working, raising a family, and facing economic hardships. And we continue to provide a range of wraparound supports to help them succeed. In times of need, our community is stepping up and delivering. Chuck and Char Fowler's $1 million gift to create an expanded Lift Up Bikes food pantry for students in need is truly inspirational. This gift also established the Fowler Emergency Grant Fund to assist students with emergency expenses. We distributed close to $6 million in Lift Up Bikes emergency grants and over $1 million in additional need-based financial aid over the past eight months, 
all to existing CSU students. To meet the technology needs of our students, many of whom lack basic computers and internet access, we are providing over 800 laptops and 230 hotspots so students can stay connected. And how about our biggest annual fundraiser, Radiance, that raises funds for last chance scholarships? Even though we had to postpone what would have been the event's 10th year anniversary in April, our CSU Foundation raised, all virtually, more than $2 million for these critical student scholarships. Another sign our community is behind us. Back in February, our seventh annual One Day Giving event raised a record $460,000 from over 2,500 donors setting new records in both giving and donor totals. In fact, we surpassed last year's total by over $150,000, one day. One of our students, Nakia Hudson, knows the benefits of this generous support. Nakia is a graduate student, a mother of two, and a caregiver for her own mother. Her story shows the spirit of perseverance that is a hallmark of CSU. With the support that CSU provides with the loaner laptops and the hotspots, I was able to actually take advantage of it, thankfully for someone actually sharing that information with me because I didn't know. But it was such an easy process. I was able to just come down um, after making the appointment and pick up what I needed. And it, it's been extremely beneficial being in student teaching and um, having to do this virtually. I'm able to utilize that laptop as kind of like my second laptop. So I can actually see the students when I'm teaching. I'm not teaching blindly as I was before. Um, it also gives me that opportunity to be a little more mobile. My personal laptop is ancient and I can't, I'm tethered to an outlet because I can't even purchase a battery for it. So I'm able to actually move around, be mobile. I can be in class and do what I need to do while my daughter is having volleyball practice and things of that nature. It has just been a godsend and it truly has been. This is why we do what we do. Thank you, Nakia, for sharing your story. We also made the decision in our time of greatest need to help incoming students and incentivize them for success. Given how difficult it was for graduating high school seniors and their families this year, we created the CSU two for one tuition promise. Every incoming freshman student who joined us this fall and successfully completes the fall semester will get the spring semester on us. Any gap in funding, we will fill it. We are also very much in tune with the challenges facing our upperclassmen and graduate students. In addition to the six million in direct student support I mentioned earlier, we enhanced our success coaching and mental health support services. One of the primary ways we connect with students is through our strong partnership with student associations. Now let's hear from Renee Betterson, Student Government Association President, on how she sees her role and how it's impacted our students this year. My role as SGA president is to amplify student concerns. Those who know me know that I am known to come to meetings with a notebook full of ideas that I've scribbled down and collected from my conversations with students. Now, as part of that role, my team and I were able to work earlier this semester to amplify students' concerns about grading in this semester. So essentially, we were able to work with the provost's office, the president's office, and the faculty senate to advocate for the extension of pass-fail grading into the fall 2020 semester. Our lives are incredibly crazy right now. They're hectic in so many different aspects, and we felt that it was important to make sure that students have the tools they need to not only mitigate the effects of COVID-19 in their lives, but to take control over their academic records going forward. Thank you, Renee. To support our faculty and students, we could not succeed without the many hardworking staff members who often work behind the scenes on our campus, the unsung heroes who make our university run. They are embedded within our colleges and departments, making sure systems work properly, students and faculty are supported, buildings are open and clean, campus grounds are maintained, and much, much more. These are the folks who don't often get the recognition they deserve. 
I'd like you to meet one of them, Rose Medina Lawrence, who has gone above and beyond to keep our campus safe. I never thought, you know, that about, about this virus now. So now we have to go above and beyond, you know, uh, come here like that. I feel like that every day when I came to CSU, we had to fight something. And of course, we had to fight the virus. We had to protect our students. We had to protect our faculty. We had to protect each other, my co-worker, you know. I protect them, they protect me. This is something that I never, ever, ever in a million years, I will thought that I'm gonna be living something like that here at CSU. We have uh, kids here that they came here and uh, they trust us, they believe in us, you know? And uh, like I say, you know, to be doing this kind of job, this is a profession, you know? And if I decide, if I choose to do this, uh, I mean, probably for the rest of my life because I really enjoy it, you know? So. I had to do it right every time when I came here. The message that, that I do have for the campus is keep doing your part. If I'm doing my part, you just keep doing because you guys are doing great. Thank you, Rose, for your hard work and dedication. I am also aware of and appreciative of the individual and collective sacrifice so many of you have made for the greater good to help stabilize our financials. It was difficult but necessary to take immediate steps to reduce costs given the impact of the pandemic on our state funding and on campus-based enrollments. Although we still have work to do, our enrollment and retention success has gone a long way toward filling our expected budget shortfall. And what about our enrollment numbers and enrollment trends? Everything we do is about the success of our students. And key indicators in 2020 give us many reasons to be proud. Why? Because having students choose CSU and stay with us during a pandemic is the best affirmation of everything we are doing to serve them well. And thanks to all of your efforts, we had a banner year. Our overall enrollment remains at over 16,000 students and is within 1.8% of last fall's enrollment. This is an incredible achievement given national and regional trends where enrollments are down between five and 20%. Our graduate enrollment is up for the first time in nine years and the overall quality of our students measured in terms of test scores and GPA has increased. Even more importantly, students who come here are choosing to stay and continue their education. Our first year retention rate is 76.8% up six percentage points over the past two years after remaining essentially flat for the previous six years. A special thanks to Nick Petty and our team of graduation coaches for the work they do across campus to enhance services for underrepresented minority and at-risk students so that each and every student stays with us and graduates. And speaking of retention, our new Parker Hannafin Living and Learning Community is another success story our first cohort of 30 students all returned this year, 30 out of 30. As you may recall, this community gives CMSD graduates studying at CSU two years of free on-campus housing in a unique living and learning environment focused on leadership and career success. Now you've heard many success stories today about who we are and why we are different. Our efforts are being noticed by others. U.S. News and World Report, which is often considered the bellwether of rankings, once again selected CSU as one of the top universities in the nation in its 2021 report on the best colleges and the universities in the U.S. CSU is ranked 119th for social mobility, up from 134th last year, and we remain the number one public university in Ohio among top performers on social mobility. According to the New York Times and the Urban Institute, CSU's graduation rate is seven percentage points higher than expected when compared with other schools with similar populations. We are showing a national audience that what we are doing is working. At the same time we are pivoting to deal with the pandemic, we, as an institution long committed to access, 
affordability, and lifelong learning are thinking hard about how we can do more to help reduce economic and racial disparities in our region and community and how we combat racism and racial biases. We are challenging ourselves, both in our individual beliefs and collective actions, to advance actions that go beyond words. At CSU, we're working on five specific initiatives. A review of campus police department policies and procedures, accelerating the work of the President's Diversity Council and incorporating diversity and inclusion as a pillar of CSU 2.0, a rededication to our Viking creed, acting with integrity and civility, embracing diversity and inclusion, and respecting individuals' freedom of opinion and expression. Advancing teaching and learning in the classroom, starting with an interdisciplinary course on race, racial and social justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, a course taught jointly by 23 distinct CSU faculty from our College of Law, Black Studies, Criminology, History, Communications, Health Sciences, Nursing, and Urban Studies. And then fifth, creating a new Pathway to Practice program to help underrepresented minorities pursue careers in medicine after getting their four-year degree at CSU. And after a year like no other, what will we do next? There has never been a time, like now, to define our own future, and we are hard at work to make this happen. As civic, public sector, and business leaders in Cleveland continue to assess the economic, social, fiscal, and health impacts of the pandemic, it is increasingly clear that high quality, affordable public education will play a defining role in our collective future. Our strategic priorities at CSU, advance CSU's reputation as a leading public research institution, continue to differentiate ourselves on student success and what a year we had on that, enhance engaged learning, strengthen our role as an anchor institution for Cleveland and Northeast Ohio, become a beacon institution to attract students and talents, build financial strength, and strengthen our campus community. All of these seven pillars will continue to define us. Now more than ever, as we work together to chart our course forward post-pandemic, we are going to focus on promoting accessible, meaningful, and affordable education, producing workforce-ready graduates, enhancing connections to good jobs, leveraging our intellectual capital to drive innovation and economic growth, building the kinds of public-private partnerships that give all of us confidence we can pull together, work together, and make the necessary investments to move us forward together. Over 80% of our students remain in Northeast Ohio after graduation with talents and skills that increasingly align with the highest demand fields in our area. No other four-year institution even comes close to producing this amount of talent that stays here. That's a huge win for our region and for our students. So here's what you can expect from us in the years ahead. Advancing our CSU 2.0 process, I'm looking forward to seeing the full range of recommendations from our five task forces so we can chart a way forward together that's consistent with our shared set of strategic priorities. I'd like to share with you today three expanded investments. First, for fiscal year 22, we will aggressively recruit 40 new faculty in the areas of biomedical research and healthcare, data analytics and cybersecurity, and smart and sustainable manufacturing. This is in addition to the 33 we re recruited last year. Second, we will add to our cadre of student success coaches to expand this great program because it works. And third, we will make another $1 million investment in need-based financial aid to our students. The second year of this commitment and another way we are remaining true to our mission of access and affordability. And saving some fantastic news for last, I am also thrilled to announce two new $1 million gifts to CSU in support of our Forward Together Fund to advance student success. You'll be hearing more details on these gifts very soon. In addition to the gifts, our CSU Foundation is allocating an additional $1 million 
to support student success initiatives like our two for one tuition promise. A great partnership and it shows that all of us are behind CSU. There is really no better indicator of the great work all of us are doing than when our many supporters step up and invest in our mission and our students. In times of challenge, all of us are tested. We at CSU have more than met that challenge in 2020. And as we move forward together, I look forward to another year of progress as we continue to educate tomorrow's leaders.